on today's show. How is John Morant reintegrating himself with the Memphis Grizzlies? And how is Memphis able to stay competitive despite missing their star player? All of that coming up right here at Locked On NBA. You are Locked On NBA, your daily NBA podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up and welcome to another edition of Locked On NBA, the biggest stories with the local experts. I'm your host, Jackson Gatlin, also host of Locked On Rockets right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Now, today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Next game, how about Luka Doncic to score more than 26.5 points? What about LeBron James to have more than 7.5 rebounds? How about Chris Paul to have less than 8.5 assists? And what about Steph Curry to have more than 3.5 three-pointers made? So what is Price Picks? It's daily fantasy sports, but how does it work? Basically, you pick two to six players, and if they score more or less than their Price Picks projection, you'd win up to 25 times back on your money on any entry that you submit. There's no competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. Price Picks offers projections on any sport that you watch. That's NBA, NFL, MLB, NHL. They've got you covered for all the action. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that simple. They're safe. They offer fast withdrawals, currently operational in over 30 states and Canada. So download the PrizePix app or go to prizepix.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code Locked On. If you deposit $100, bucks, price picks will give you $100. Bucks. If you deposit $50, bucks, price picks will give you $50. So don't forget to enter promo code Locked On at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. Joining us now is the host of Locked on Grizzlies, Joe Molinax. You can find wherever you listen to your podcasts and on YouTube. Just search Locked on Grizzlies and be sure to, of course, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff on the YouTube side of things. Joe, we had this feels like kind of a long-ish saga with with Ja Morant trying to, mm. you know, he, he's figuring out the stuff that he's dealing with off the court, but he made his much-anticipated return to the Grizzlies lineup this past week, got a handful of games under his belt, just up to this point, we'll get into, you know, some of how he's looked with him back on the floor, but how has Ja, you know, kind of handled this situation to this point, addressing the concerns about what happened with with the gun situation, all that, and transitioning back to rejoining this Grizzlies team? Well, first off, thanks for having me, as always. Happy to, to be on uh, the, the main show here, so to speak, on our NBA side of the network. Uh, I think that the first thing that people need to understand is he's still not okay. Like in terms of him getting right to Michael Cole, my co-host over at Lockdown Grizzlies is the beat writer for the Memphis Grizzlies for the Commercial Appeal local paper there in Memphis. And he has said, you know, he was at that initial first inter- media availability. Ja is very different than he was before he went uh, to Florida for counseling, rehab, whatever you want to call it. I think the official definition is counseling. Uh, he, he has, at least for the time being, changed his demeanor he is much more guarded he appears to be much more aware of his emotions on the basketball court uh, against the Atlanta Hawks on Sunday evening for example he had a couple of really impressive plays against the Rockets uh, I you probably saw one of the the dunks that he that he hit um, a posterized jam that you know Ja before all of this probably would have flexed and yelled out a NBA young boy lyric or something like that. And, you know, he would have been a little bit more audacious, a little more demonstrative. He has not done that. He's made good plays. He's roughly the same player. He's still the same explosive talent that he was before all this happened. But you could definitely tell there's a change in how he carries himself. Uh, I don't know if it's for the better yet or not, but I I do think that it's, it's important to point out that for all the people that criticized, oh, he was only there for 10 days. How much can you actually learn? You know, that's not how how this works, right? He's, he has not at any point acted like everything's fine. Um, he, he is very honest about why he thought he should come off the bench at first. It was his idea. He has talked about, you know, wanting to show his teammates that he he doesn't want to disrupt the success that they had been having. He wanted to add to it. And that's the way it's worked these first three games. Now, granted, it was against the Rockets, no offense. And the, uh, and not, the not taking Hawks, it's, it's cool, <laughs> but, it, but it was against an Atlanta Hawks team that has been playing better, right? Like that is a, and for a Grizzlies team that this season has really struggled on the road to go into Atlanta and pick up that win, even though the Grizzlies are theoretically better than the Hawks. That's not a game that they've consistently won over the span of the season. So Morant has added 
to them. He hasn't taken away from the success that the team was having without him. And, you know, that that's a testament to his willingness to get back into the flow slowly. And, and I think that it's extra evidence to the idea that perhaps he is indeed, you know, I never felt this way. I always took him seriously. But for those outside of Memphis that maybe think he's full of it, I would argue that if you've been paying attention these last few days since he's been back, I don't know that he is. I think he's genuinely going through something and he's trying to grow from it. And you talk about kind of the willingness there, right? But, you know, his idea to come off the bench, that whole thing. It's not often that you see a star player really take that you know, moment and be like, Hey, I just, I'll come off the bench. I, I'm trying sure. to reinsert myself in the success that you guys are having kind of, uh, you know, and what that says about, about where he is at and how he's trying to, you know, kind of reintegrate himself with this Grizzlies team. And it's about humility, I think, to an extent, right. And we don't have any concrete reports of, of be, people being unhappy with him, but we do have the Steven Adams report of the players meeting where Steven Adams, the lone veteran essentially on the team, uh, came out and talked about stop partying, stop going out as much as you are. And it was one of those conversations where, you know, you know who they're talking about, but they don't really say the name of the person that they're talking about. It was about Ja. And that was before all of the stuff in Denver and all the issues that occurred on that now infamous road trip. Uh, but I, I think that for him, it is a willingness to say, I am not bigger than the team, Right. And Taylor Jenkins himself said, like, obviously, John Morant's eventually going to start. Like, there are rumblings on Grizzlies Twitter and maybe a blog post here or a tweet there that would say, well, you know, Tyus Jones is a really good starter and John Morant would dominate second unit. Just stop. Like, it was never basketball logical to have Tyus Jones start ahead of John Morant. If it's about his mental, which is what it was about, then cool, right? Like I said, I'm never going to judge the guy or anybody for that matter going through something like that. Cause I don't know what they're going through. I don't have that experience, but I do have that empathy to at least acknowledge. I don't know what I don't know. Uh, he, he seems to be genuine in what he is looking to do. If it's a PR stunt, he's excellent at PR, which I think we can all agree as much as we love John Memphis, that has not been a strength of his over his first four years in the NBA. So I'm, I'm not as convinced that it's a giant PR publicity thing as I am, it's a young player that made a series of mistakes that now understands, even if he should have understood all along, you know, yeah, I could lose $40 million from this all NBA thing. Oh, you're saying Nike may not release my shoe on time. Oh, Powerade changed the March Madness commercial and took me out of it. Like all of these things that have occurred, you know, none of this is guaranteed for him. And he has to make conscious changes to his life in order to achieve the things that he's been in a position to take full advantage of with the fame and the glory that has come with his rise in the NBA. Grizzlies went six and three in this most recent stretch without jaw. And we also saw, you know, there was last season, the stretch without jaw as well, where the Grizzlies kind of didn't miss a beat. They just, they kept performing. In fact, there were, we had some wild takes flying. Around. Are these, is, is this Grizzly team better without jaw, which is yeah. you know, not the case whatsoever. So, that was super dumb too. Yeah. W- w- right. So without making it a knock on, what Ja means to this team, what does it say about Memphis that they can lose their star, right? Because a lot of teams, they lose their star and they fumble, right? They immediately like crater. You know, what does it say about the rest of this team that they can still compete at such a high level without the guy that straw, you know, the guy that's the, the straw that serves the drink, if you will. It says that they have two starting point guards and how many teams in the NBA can legitimately say that they have two legitimate NBA starting point guards. Uh, to Tyus Jones's credit, he was a reserve again. Ja started against the Hawks on Sunday evening, and Tyus had his first good reserve game that he's had in a long time, like being a true backup to Morant. Tyus's numbers as a reserve this year are far worse than they are as a starter. But when Tyus is the starter and Ja is not there, they do it in a different way, but they are just as good in terms of Tyus helping facilitate the offense, helping get looks for Jaron Jackson Jr., Desmond Bain. Tyus is the more traditional game manager, able to hit the floater, big shot maker when needed. You know, the comparison has been made while Ja was out to Mike Conley in a way, that if you watch Tyus Jones over this nine-game stretch when Morant wasn't playing, and then even the two games where Ja was coming off the bench, he's shown some flashes of what Mike Conley was for the Grizzlies a few years ago, right? 
So I think that if you have John Morant and Mike Conley circa 2019 on your basketball team, you're, you're going to be pretty good. And again, no offense, it was against the Houston Rockets, but I think we saw some flashes of what Tyus can do as that starter. The question is, is he able to be what he was against the Hawks, to his credit, consistently? Can he be a reserve guy that continues that energy for Memphis going into the playoffs? Because if he can, you know, the Grizzlies are going to be a problem because that's 48 minutes or more if there's overtime of starting caliber point guard play. And not many teams can, can compete with that in terms of their depth. The Grizzlies have proven this season more than anything that they have a legitimate, you know, maybe outside of Boston, they are the deepest team in the National Basketball Association. And that is a testament to the way they drafted, the way that they've built this roster. And, you know, Tyus Jones come this summer it is it doesn't make sense to have a $14 million insurance policy, but for right now, it sure is nice to have him on the roster, especially if he's able to play the way he did against Atlanta. We're talking about them being one of the deepest teams in the association. They don't even have Brandon Clark or Steven Adams right now so either. Like that's two right? more guys that, you know, could easily be you know part of the rotation. It's, it's crazy. But with, with the Memphis Grizzlies, I mean, how, how does John Morant continue to navigate his, you know, rehabilitation process, both on and off the court? What does that do for him? How does that change his personality and how he carries himself moving forward? Will Steven Adams make it back in time for a Grizzlies postseason run? You'll have us covered for all of that and more over at Locked on Grizzlies. Joe, I appreciate you stopping by Locked on NBA with me. Anytime. Happy to talk about it.